Now the cardiologist has asked us to perform a 12 lead ECG on this patient who's been experiencing some chest pain. So we're going to put on the electrodes to record the 12 lead ECG. And these electrodes just have a little pad of gel in there and they're sticky. So they're going to stick onto the surface of the body. So I'm going to put one on the left arm there and I'm going to put another one on the right arm just here. Now where these go on the arm doesn't matter too much. They're just the upper limb electrodes. I'm now going to put two on the lower limbs. So I'm going to put one on the left leg. Again, find somewhere that's not too hairy to position it so it doesn't hurt when you pull it off. And again, where that goes on the limb is not too critical. And I'm going to put one on the right leg. The one on the right leg is actually working as an earth. Now that's not too difficult so far. But where people do get sometimes a little bit confused is with the position of the chest electrodes or the V electrodes. The V leads. Now, if we consider the anatomy, this is the top of the sternum here. This is the jugular notch. And this is the sternal angle or the angle of Louis, because the top part of the sternum is in that direction. The bottom part is in that direction. And there's an angle between the two, the sternal angle or the angle of Louis. And this is a very useful anatomical landmark because we can put our fingers on either side of the angle of Louis and then we can feel the intercostal spaces. Now this is rib one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And we can see that these ribs are connected to the sternum via the costal cartilages. So fingers on the sternal angle, that means that that finger there is now feeling the first intercostal space. And we'll feel the indentation between the ribs, which in life contains the intercostal muscles. So that is the first intercostal space, that is the second. And if I can carry on feeling down, that is the third. And that is the fourth intercostal space. Now the V1 electrode goes in the fourth intercostal space immediately to the right of the sternum. So one, two, three, four, immediately to the right. And that is the position of V1 electrode. Now the second chest electrode, V2, fourth intercostal space, just on the left side of the sternum in that position there. So there we have V1 and V2. Now the next lead to position is V4. Now V4 is in the fifth intercostal space. So it's one space down and it's on the mid clavicular line which goes down there. So this is the clavicle. The mid clavicular line is in the middle of the clavicle projecting down. So I'm going to put V4 there, midclavicular line, fifth intercostal space. And V3 simply goes between V2 and V4 in a straight line. So that is the correct position for V3. Now the next electrode to position is V6. Now we want to drop a line straight down here at 90 degrees when the patient's lying flat. And where that line transects with the mid axillary line, that is the line in the middle of the armpit going down here, that is the correct position for V6. So that's going to go down there in the mid axillary line. And then V5 simply goes halfway between V4 and V6. So it's going to go into that position just there. 
And what this means is the heart, which is going to be here, when the heart depolarizes and repolarizes, that electrical activity will be detected on the surface of the body and it will give us positional information as these electrodes, as it were, are viewing the heart from different directions. So they can pick up the depolarization and repolarization of the atrial and ventricular myocardium, giving us anatomical information about the heart and allowing us to detect a wide range of cardiac pathologies. But we need to have the, in the consistent positions so that the positional information that we give to the cardiologists on the 12 lead ECG is accurate. So the position of the 10 pickup electrodes for the 12 lead ECG.